Hi, I'm Janet Engel, the 5-Minute Read Maker. I'm going to be showing you a read repair shop today uh, for Oboist 787, Anonymous Oboist 787. Um, I actually think you'll find it really interesting. It's got a, There are a lot of things that we talk about over the course of looking at these three reads. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and do that. Just click the little red subscribe button um, and maybe even click the little bell that says notify because then you always know when I drop a new video. Um, thanks so much for watching. Let's uh, let's jump into the content. Um, thank you for sending these reads. I am excited to talk to you about them. Um, you had sent me three reads and uh, labeled them and then let me know that this one was the closest to being finished, which I can clearly see, and that the other two were sort of in progress, but you weren't really sure what to do next. Um, and I'm going to, uh, I've definitely got some observations overall, but my first news is sad news, which is that both of these two purple guys are pretty dramatically overwound. And when I say that, I mean that uh, the winding, the thread itself, goes up to at least 48 millimeters here and well over 47 here. And I double and triple checked a few times just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. But, um, and when you do that, when the winding goes up beyond the height of the staple, um, you'll find that you're compressing the cane right here in a way that it can't quite handle. And um, you're disrupting the, uh, you're disrupting like the way the air can travel in here. And Sometimes you'll find, as you have with this one, um, that the opening gets very, very large. Sometimes you'll find that the opening gets very, very small because it's just like not predictable what happens once you get over the end of that staple. Um, and so that is my, my primary concern with these first two, right? I think that's probably a fatal flaw and I don't know that we're going to be able to turn those into reads, but I'm going to try because I've got things to talk about. Um, and this third guy is definitely not overwound as far as I can tell and looks like it, uh, de it might absolutely be a read. So I'm going to deal with this afterwards because I think you've got some um, uh, consistent problems that we can talk about through these guys. So my first impression is this. I'm looking at this read. When I look at it in the light, I can see a really clear looking rooftop. It's very obvious. But when I look at it straight on, or as I run my fingers along it, there's almost no visible rooftop. Um, the rooftop is almost uh, your, your cane appears so smooth on the surface and yet so, and yet I can clearly see in the light what you have done uh, in terms of sculpting this rooftop. And so what I want to observe about that is that it's really hard um, for the vibrations of this reed to sort of slow down on their way into the heart. So when you start, you, you've had to scrape a lot to get this thing vibrating. Because the tip isn't vibrating on its own, because it's so smoothly connected into the heart, um, it's it becomes weirdly a hard read, uh, or a hard read to handle anyway, because you don't really have control, you don't really have the, the heart slowing down the vibrations like you might want. So as soon as you start to blow it, it blows wildly, sort of right away. It crows almost too easily. And if I pop it on the oboe here. Like, it works, actually, sort of... It works very nicely, because you finished it, um, and you've got, basically, the corners are the thinnest part, the sides of the tip are the thinnest part, in general. Um, but, for me, there is not enough separation between the tip and the heart, and that's why it is so almost effortless to play in a way that is frightening. So what I would like to do with this read, and I cannot promise success here because the uh, because of the overwind issue, you're gonna we're gonna get something inconsistent or something weird that's gonna happen. Um, because you've built this read very very short, the uh, rooftop that I can identify is down at like sixty two. 63 like it's very very low and your overall read is down at 69 or 68 so I, I'm not promising anything but I do want to see what happens if we separate the tip from the heart just a little bit more so I'm gonna to go to roughly where your rooftop is and just cut in a little harder and really work that side 
of the tip all the way up to the corner. And I know you think this reed is thin, and it is, uh, largely because you've scraped so much back here, but look at how much cane I'm able to get off of these sides and corners. Other side, same deal. I'm just sort of reestablishing your rooftop a little bit because I actually want that rooftop to be visible to the naked eye as well as when viewed strongly backlit. Okay, so having done that, it's even easier, of course, because now we've got a long tip that's vibrating all by itself. I'm gonna clip back. And again, this reed is already structured so short. Clip it again. <laughs> Clip it again. And suddenly, there, we've gotten to just an extremely short place, but the reed is beginning to have a crow that I can recognize as a crow. And if I put this on the oboe, While this reed still has problems, I can play it like a reed now. I can put air behind it. I can start softly. I can crescendo. I can diminuendo. And it's not going berserk on me. I wonder what happens if I take this same reed, the one which now has a, a moderately sized tip visibly transitioning into a heart. I wonder what happens now if I dig out behind the heart a little bit to make the heart think it's thicker. I wonder if I could get any more comfortable resistance in there. So I'm opening those windows right behind the heart. And this is not because the reed is too hard. It's not because the reed is too open. It's because I'm hoping to see if I can build in just a little bit more resistance by giving this reed a second stop behind the heart. One more clip, because of course, anytime I scrape, or almost every time I scrape, I'm dropping the crow. slightly indifferent to that work that I just did. I think it might have been, uh, that might have been one thing too much because now I'm, I'm really feeling the, uh, the constriction of the overwind. And pre previously I wasn't as aware of that. I saw it, but it didn't bother me as much. Um, but I hope you see what I was trying to do. And I'm actually almost a little surprised that with this reed, which is wound, all the way to 48 millimeters, which is finished at 68 millimeters with a rooftop down at like 62. For me, these dimensions are crazy. And yet this is a reed. So now that I've done that, I'm excited to see what we can do with these other two, which are not as short yet and stubby yet. Um, and th this one is overwound, I'm not going to deny it, but I, I bet we can do something. So here is our purple reed, letter BJ. I do want to ask you about your lettering system at some point, because I'm so curious. I can see like erased previous markings um, from previous reeds, I presume. Okay, um, this guy is less finished, which is what you told me already, but the thing that stands out to me is uh, a little bit the same as before. On, especially strongly, on the right-hand side of both blades, there's just a lot of bulk up in the corner. So yeah, I just took that off without even trying. Um, and there's still plenty more to go. You're doing a pretty nice job of thinning the tip, but I think you could thin it a lot more, especially on the, let me get a better pencil here. 
Here we go. Especially on the far outsides, the far right, the far left, on both blades, um, is I think really fertile ground for your reed making. Let me quickly crow this and play it before I uh, before I work. It's an unfinished reed, it's got a low crow. And it feels really, really hard because again, the tip and the heart are not really separated from each other very well. So that's the thing I'm gonna fix. I'm, go I'm gonna start at the gutters of the rooftop in the place where you have placed it, which for me is I think a little bit low, but I'll, I'll uh, measure in a second. And I'm taking just tons, tons of cane off the right hand side off the left hand side and if you notice I'm not really doing very much in the center yet I can always go there later but I'm not that concerned about the middle the middle wants to be thinner excuse me the middle wants to be thicker than the sides Lord don't quote me on that okay other blades same game I'm figuring out where your cut-in is or what you seem to intend as your cut-in because it's a little bit vague and the part of this equation that I think is so important is right there at your rooftop place there's a place where you're not being really specific with your knife and letting it go in and I really do that with my thumb and forefinger on my left hand my non-dominant hand I'm using this gesture of pressing my finger at the reed against the knife which is guided by my thumb so everything is really very controlled here and I'm angling the reed at the knife and the knife at the reed so that I get only the area that I want and I get it with the strength and angle that I want so now that I've got just a little bit of a stronger cut in here and here and here and here uh, before I do anything else, let me clip it back till we get a crow and see what we have. Well, that didn't take very long. And I'm putting it back on the oboe. Whew. You know what? I may not touch this much more um, because because uh, we have already established that you're overwound. So if I've got a reed that's this good right now, I feel like maybe I don't want to push my luck. I may have pushed my luck a little too much over here. Um, so I'm not gonna t I'm not gonna mess around in your back or windows. I think I'm just going to redo the precise thing I just did: sides and corners of the tip on both blades. I'm being much more gentle now. Just look at the quality of cane that's coming off that reed. But I'm just trying to see if we can get that finessed just a little bit more. Okay, I believe that the corners are now for sure the thinnest part. My crow is low, so I can clip. My crow is better, so I'm going to play it. seems like a really nice read. I'm curious about its measurements. I didn't um, adjust the height of the rooftop from what you had. I just used what you had. Um, but this read is balancing really nicely. It's definitely wound up at about 47 and a half and I suppose it's just possible that this tube is a little extra long and that you're not too far over. Um, your rooftop's at about 65. Your finished length is about 70. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't touched the windows in the back and I, I'm, I will on your blue read because I'm curious to see what will happen. 
Uh, but this is a reed now that plays, and literally all I did to it was defining those gutters and cleaning out the tip all the way to the corners. Okay, so let's take a look at your third reed, which I'm kind of excited about because it's not overwound, because it's still plenty long, because I can see that there's some wood and some bulk in there, and I can see that you've placed all of the sections of the reed in about the right place. You just haven't finished it. Um, uh, play it before I scrape. It's extremely open and extremely uh, a little wild in the crow. And all of this, I promise, is going to be for the same reasons as, as these others, that the sides and corners of the tip are not the thinnest part and the tip is not separated enough from the heart. So that feels a little bit nuts right now, but give me a few minutes because I bet there's a read in here. I know you've seen me do this before. Side of the tip all the way up to the corner. Other side. Um, it's actually very striking, particularly striking, um, on this reed that you've got sort of a rooftop here-ish, but then right here it really turns a corner um, where we should be angled all the way down. It really goes here and then like starts growing up again, which I've talked about in a whole bunch of videos recently. It's just that concept of, of weeds growing up out of your gutters, which, you know, happens to everybody. Who actually remembers to clean out their gutters before the weeds start to grow? I do not. Um, but if we're talking about reeds, I think that that uh, tree growing out of your gutter is not helping you at all. Other blade as well. Oh yeah. Your left sides in general are stronger than your right sides, which is a little unusual. Most people struggle over on the left more. Um, so as you come, as you work on the right side, be really conscious of using your left hand angle to turn the reed away from your knife. Bring your right hand this way so that you're, you have that flexibility to just work on whichever area of the reed you want to. All right, let's see what I've done. Already we've tamed it. It's so much better. I'm going to clip it back till we get a crow and then I'm going to work lower down. And this is not crowing as easily as the others, um, just because it's even less finished down below. But let's see what we have so far. I mean, this is not a terrible read, and it's not remotely finished yet. So, um, now I'm going to move backward in this read, because I'm pretty okay with the tip. I see that on this side, you've got a weird... No, it's not weird. It's just a thing. You've got a sort of a mark here, and it's not really clear where your windows start down here, which I think should be around this area. Over on this side, you've got quite a clear window start here, but there's so much bulk and wood in this heart, especially on the right-hand side. I don't know if you can see how that right-hand side is still extremely shiny bark, um, and there's a lot of, like, bulk and, and bulges in the heart on this side. And in the heart on this side, it's much, much lighter. And again, not very distinct compared to the windows. Um, so I need symmetry. So I'm gonna start on this side where I can see that the heart is enormous. I'm gonna tame it by scraping all the way from the left, gently, because this is the heart, um, across to the right. I'm letting my knife, look at the quality of the wood I'm taking off. It's so much less than anything I was doing even in the tip, which is of course a delicate area too. As I get all the way over to the side, you'll start to hear that bark under my knife. And I'm gonna scrape until that sound goes away. So now the heart is smooth and shiny and it's arced from the one side to the other, like a football, thinner in the sides and thicker in the center. I'll flip it, flip it over. And now what I'm gonna to try to do is, uh, I'll polish the heart the same way, but I don't really wanna take much out of this. What I really wanna do is define below it. So 
one, you know what? I'm not going to do the heart yet. I'm going to define first. Below the heart, up to where I want the heart to be, about 60 millimeters. And then I'll just brush away that gunk that I've left. And the reason I didn't do this heart first is that I felt like I wasn't really clear where it was, and it's already pretty thin. I can see bark on the side, yes, but it's thinner than the other side was. So I'm just sort of working slowly to make sure that I get the symmetry I need. There's the bark, you can hear it. And the bark again. All right, and now again for symmetry, I'm gonna to have to uh, establish windows over here. Same thing. And play. It's got a C crow. I think we're gonna to wanna to balance this one more time, but let's see what we have. Now this is turning into quite a nice read. Um, I'm aware of a symmetry challenge here at the very top of the rooftop on your upper blade. Um, I guess I am probably the one who made a pretty strong cut in right there. And on this side it's much more uh, relaxed. The transition is easier. So I think I'm going to on your upper blade, just bring this back half a millimeter so that, nope, nope, take it back. Instead, I'm going to go north of my thin spot and see if I can reestablish slope. Maybe you couldn't see what I was looking at. Um, I'm seeing that there's a pretty strong transition, really quite a curb from the heart into the tip on the right side of this blade. And on the other blade, it is much, much less pronounced. So I'm concerned about that symmetry, but instead of taking more out of this heart to ease that transition, I'm just gonna try to slope it out to the tip. That's my plan. So that even if there is a hard transition, it's not uh, also a thin place in the tip. I have lost my crow, so I'm clipping, which is a weird statement, right? But it uh, seems to me that the tip is now a little bit too long, too, too long to crow. Indeed, I'm getting it back now. Um, and now I'm just still trying to get the tip and heart balanced to each other. I just worked on this side of the tip. I'm going to work on this side of the tip. Sides and corners. Because you're never going to go wrong making sure that the sides and corners are the thinnest part. I'm probably going to scrape just a little bit over the heart on both sides. Because I'm not in love with this notch that is... Well, let's get, just get that now. But now I've got the crow. Come on, little Reed. I have the crow. I have the response. It works. It just doesn't feel great yet. And this is my my main culprit, the same little pocket we've been talking about. So I'm going to fix it from the heart. Back up about a half a millimeter and just oh so gently scoop that in just so that the vibrations can more easily get from the thin tip here into the thick heart. I'm going to polish that heart across because it's still the heaviest part of the heart. Now I've dropped the crow, one more clip, and I swear I think I'm done. Well, as you can hear, I've slightly lost response. I'm not giving up. 
I'm not giving up. There's a read in here. Our measurements are okay. This whole read sits a little bit low um, compared to my reads, right? But it's very comparable to the others of yours with the rooftop at about 65 on one side, 64 on the other, and the uh, top of the windows, the bottom of the heart, at about 58 or 59. The whole thing is just a little bit... Uh, more grounded, I would say, a little bit shorter than mine. And all I'm doing now is I'm just walking through it, sort of polishing things, letting my knife see what it needs to scrape, and sort of looking to drop the crow a little bit so it can clip. Succeeded. Clipping, and that is the feel I wanted. To sum up, Oboist 787's reeds um, were mostly, uh, had largely structural issues. There were um, really specific uh, concerns with the divisions between the tip, the heart, the windows. Um, and uh, But in all cases, I was able to work the sides and corners of the tip to improve response. I was able to uh, rework those structural concerns um, in order to make some reads in there. So uh, Oboist 787's reads might not be exactly like yours, but do you have similar issues? Is there anything that uh, we said in this video that really felt resonant for you? Let me know in the comments. Um, of course, if you're interested in doing a read repair shop like this for yourself, you don't have to be a member of my Invincible Oboist cohort. Um, I have this available on my website, JanetIngle.com, where you could also order oboe reads or cane or CDs or... I mean, one CD, or um, read cases. Um, so uh, let me know if I can help you out at all. You can find me from JanetIngle.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.